Your Excellency, thank you very much for talking to the BBC. Um, first of all, how, how are things going with you, with the um, campaigning? This is going very well. Uh, I'm very, very confident and that this election, free and fair, uh, I'm the front runner. And that is why I'm getting many arrows. <laughs> we'll, we'll, come to, we'll talk about one or two of the arrows in a bit. Let, let's talk about your priorities. If you do win the elections in, in February and you're sworn into office uh, come May 29th, what are your priorities? Security and economic recovery to, to uh, accelerated development to you know, get Nigeria employed and get inflation down. You know, monetary policy needs to be changed. Subsidy need to be decided upon and uh, removed. Mm. Security yes, is a big problem for many Nigerians. And I remember in this very room in 2015, I asked President Mohamed Buhari when he was campaigning about that issue. And he said, well, we know what we're going to do. We know what we're going to do. The problem still persists. What are you going to do specifically? It actually reduced. I would defend him for that. You know, so then... 17 local governments and about four states where we have flags of foreign jihadists in Nigeria. That is no more. That is long gone. Uh, to start a chaos is easy to bring normalcy and redecorate uh, is more difficult. Here we are, but yes, degraded, but not completely eliminated as well. Then we talk briefly of lethal weapons and ammunition and technology equipment that could have help accelerated the cleanup of uh, those people. The West is yet to feel comfortable enough with a Buhari administration to sell us the arms. Do, do you think that, will change, that might change with you or will that change uh, with you? It, it could change, it might not change. But we have to look at, you know, alternatives. And that, those are the mass recruitment Mm. of uh, individuals in a volunteer army to really clean up. So, so uh, 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 you know, m more people in your military forces, security forces, so yes. to speak, as you said during your speech downstairs. Now, I just want to move away from that because I realize we don't have much time. There's also the issue of, you know, Nigerians have lived under this Buhari administration for eight years now, almost eight years. Some would say this eight years has come with a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. You are coming from the same perspective as President Mohammed Buhari, and you know you, you're members of the same political party. You helped bring him in uh, to office nearly eight years ago. What are you going to do different? Why should Nigerians be voting for you? Because I'm different. I am Bola Ahmed Tinubu. I have governed Lagos. I built a modern state that could be a country on its own. I've led an administration that is so prudent. From 600 million internally generated revenue to 5 billion a month. That's a record. Nobody else can brag about that. I've treated and tamed the Atlantic Ocean surge in Nigeria that will have perished many people in Lagos. The infrastructure renewal of Lagos is excellent. I've, I've continuity in Lagos. Buhari has done his best. Mm. I, I can't run away from him being my friend, my leader in the party. I will not. Okay, sir. I mean, when you talk about um, money generated in Lagos, and I want to come to your own personal self when you talk about uh, you're a very wealthy man I so, don't know. well you know i mean I, you are not in my account I'm, I'm not in your account but 
This is speculation, and it's fine. You can actually re rebut it or, or not. When I look at some um, publications and I say they are worth four billion, some is even more than that, but you refuse to explain where your wealth comes from. I know where you live in Lagos. It's a massive, sprawling mansion that takes up nearly a quarter of a street in a very expensive suburb. Why do you refuse? I mean, don't Nigerians have the right to know where the wealth of their next leader comes from? Yeah, because uh, they got to know how to analyze and how to ask questions, not in the accusatory format. Are they enemy of wealth? If they are not enemy of wealth, investment do yield. I have an example of a Warren Buffett. And one of the richest men in, in, in the country, in, in America and in the world. He started from stock buying and brokerages. I inherited great real estate. I turned the values around. I'm, I'm not denying my wealth. I've not been, I, I was a, the most investigated, the most accused governor in the opposition up to, you know, from, uh, uh, for eight years and up to 2007. And since I left the office, I'm still there. I've not taken any government appointment, no government contract. Yes, but some say the legacy you left in Lagos State was that, you know, you always, you were getting a share of the revenue that Lagos State was generating. Hey, excuse me, share what? Have they proven it? The World Bank has, IMF have, uh, has investigated the record in Lagos. What's wrong with them? And I want to move away from that. It's I think envy, you, envy, envy. I, I think you've kind of explained that, and we don't have much time. If you are not running for president, sir, you have two main opposition candidates, Abu Bakar Atiku and Peter Obi, who people are saying, you know, is, is the young upstart, and I mean that in a very positive way. Young where? Young upstart. Have they been uh, <laughs> governor of Anambra? Anyway, uh, Your Excellency, if you weren't running for president, which of your two major opponents would you be voting for? None. Why not? Because they are not as competent as any other person out there. They have no track record. None of them is qualified except me.